Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Ladies, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. I'm Astrid. I'm here with my partner, Mel. I'm still getting used to this. Uh, sorry, Mel. <laughs> How are you, Mel? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. We used the fun intro today. I was bebopping along and worried I'd get caught when we got on the, on the show here. How are you doing today? I'm good. Good. I just... It's one of those days that this is the first time we pre-recorded an episode, so so you guys know we're not live right now. Um, this is the first time we do this, but it's a topic that came up and I figured you and I could talk about being women in the wrestling community. And mm -hmm. it just, I feel like we get a lot of comments here and there from people and not a lot of women speaking up about what just, you know, everything that just happened. So mm -hmm. I thought it would be interesting for us to talk about uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrators Women's 150 that just came out, I believe, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Hopefully I got that right. Okay. Um, I figured we could just talk about the top 10 at least and just kind of, you know, give our opinions on the people that we do know, have knowledge about, because I... Thankfully, there's a lot of people from Stardom, and you have knowledge about that end of it, and I can help with the other end of it, so we can complement each other in that way. Uh, but I figure we could talk about at least the top 10 and maybe kind of name a few of the people that we thought could have been a little bit higher up than they were, maybe a little bit lower based on the criteria that they have, which is something that I wanted to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a criteria, a criteria of uh, they have an evaluation period, which is from October 1st, 2021 to September 15, 2022. And they also account any ring achievements that they had, any influence outside of the sport and stuff like that, and win and losses, all that uh, stuff. So there's a little bit of everything when it comes to the ring. It's not just one particular thing that they look when they rank these women. And I figure with the discussion that's happening in social media, it will be a good time for us to discuss it. And then maybe, depending how it goes after today, maybe we'll have another part two and talk about the rest of the 150 and just give our insights to the people that we saw there and maybe the familiar and not so familiar faces because it, I feel like it's always a good way to introduce ourselves to new talent because I will make myself. I don't watch stardom. I don't know how to pronounce the names. I don't know who they are. But like I said, and I told Mel before starting this, this is my way of getting introduced to them and knowing their names and knowing their achievements. And it helps me kind of, you know, get familiar with them and it introduces me to them and it incites me to watch them, which is something that I haven't done. There's so much wrestling to keep up with and it's just hard to watch everything. So I admittedly don't even watch everything. Even AW lately, I feel like I've been in the bark burner for me lately as well. Um, but it is what it is. So I just, I feel like for me, I can't speak about stardom um, at all because I don't have a knowledge about them. But I figure that's why we have Mel here. She has that expertise about Japanese wrestling that I don't have. So we complement each other very well. <laughs> right, Mel? <laughs> 100%. Yeah, yeah, let's get into it, Astrid, because, man, this top 10, we had yeah. some doozies. We had some doozies on this one. Yeah. Um, the then um like I, I don't know who you want to kind of start chatting about here if you wanted to kind of work our way down from number 10 to, to number yeah. one i mean tay valkyrie number 10 correct yeah I, I we bought the digital copy so we can have it in time to be able to do this episode and discuss it so we were looking at it at the same time as we we're doing the discussion <laughs> i'll um, be flipping back and forth <laughs> yeah so yeah uh, we have taya valkyrie with number 10 um I believe it's, she went from 126 that she was in 2021 to number 10 this year, which is a huge jump. But um, she's one of those people that I believe ever since she got released from NXT. And I feel like she, it's, I know it's not her fault, but I feel like the NXT part of it wasn't the best I have seen from Taya. I feel like she could do more than what she'd done in NXT. Not only as a wrestler, but it's in her character as well. I mm -hmm. feel like in her wrestling, we didn't see her wrestle often, and I wish it was more because I knew of her name and I seen videos here and there, but I had never seen her in character, and that was the first time I did. And I expected and I wanted more from her, but I know it's not her fault either in that aspect of it. But I feel like she's one of those people that, uh, like Diana, for me, ever since she got released, she has done so much and she has done so many things outside of WWE in so many different companies. She has like, what, four or five championships at this point? I lost count. I think so, yeah. And yeah. she's a new belt collector for me. Can you make a who? <laughs> no, it's Maya. Right. And I feel like I like that it's not only different companies, but in different places as well, because mm -hmm. she went from being in Impact to being the Reina de Reina's champion in Triple A as well. And just like, what? It's just mm -hmm. incredible to think about it. And 
I cannot like her having number 10 I really don't have any complaints about this one what did you think you know, I actually have to agree. It's very telling that, that like you said, she came out of NXT, WWE, having not really done anything, and, and or at least anything that we really want to kind of talk about going forward. She came out and just kind of hit the ground running, didn't let the, the experience affect her. But it, it just really does show you that it, it doesn't matter if you are the biggest company in the world. I mean, you can, you can make it bigger somewhere else. I personally feel that that's what she's doing. I mean, I feel like we're talking about her more that she is with Impact, that she is more with AAA. And, and if anyone can get a hold, I mean, I found it on YouTube. If you can get a hold of the Reina De La Reina match of Taya Valkyrie versus uh, Camille, holy Hannah Montana. That <laughs> was an utterly incredible match and showed exactly what it is that Taya Valkyrie is capable of doing on her own, let alone with a tag team on Impact. Um, I, I, I'm not happy that, or sorry, I'm not unhappy about where she is on this list either. Yeah. Just like, it's incredible thing. She captured the reign of the Reina's championship from Diana. Mm -hmm. She, uh, she has the featherweight title from MOW as well. Mm -hmm. And she just recently won the Nakas tag team titles as well. So just imagine that just happened just in the last couple of weeks and mm -hmm. last couple of months to think about. And it just, it shows what somebody can do and they have the freedom to do what they can do. And it's just incredible thing of the talent that she has. Mm -hmm. And she has done so, so well. I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to count them, but I think she has at least four, maybe five championships right now. Wow. And she's working with so many companies like Impact, mm -hmm. MLW, and NWA, Triple A. Like, mm -hmm. what else can she do? She's doing so much mm -hmm. already. And it's incredible to think of like, these are the things that happen when they get that liberty that she didn't have being in NXT. And when she got signed to NXT, I had hope, knowing a little bit about her from Impact, that she will bring that kind of charisma and that character, mm -hmm. similar at least, uh, to NXT. But it wasn't the case. But at the same time, that's why I think releases are kind of bittersweet. Because obviously you don't mm -hmm. want to see somebody lose their job. But at the same time, look at what's happening when somebody like her got released and what she's done so far. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that, I, I don't disagree with anything you said there. That That's 100% the truth. Like if she, she's done more in the last few months to, to really kind of solidify her in one of the top female entertainers of this year, to be honest. Um, I unfortunately didn't get the opportunity to meet her when she, she was here. I do hope she comes back so I might be able to, to see her the next time. But man, yeah, what a year for her. I'm very proud of her. Very proud of her. She came from from this area, I believe. Um, she had had left not long before I actually started going to the local shows here. Oh, That's nice. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and I'll leave number nine to you now. Number nine, number nine. Oh yes, my girl, my Starlight <laughs> Kid. So Starlight Kid, I did have to look up a little bit of information on her. I thought she'd been around a lot longer just because of the reputation that she has in mm -hmm. stardom. Um, so Starlight Kid, I found out, was only 21 years old. She's very, wow. very young. And I'm taller than her. Like, goodness have mercy. I am so proud of this. She's only 4'11". I can't tell That's you. My height. How, I can't tell you how happy I am <laughs> that I found a wrestler smaller than me. Um, she debuted in 2005. So she, or sorry, 2015, not 2005. So she's had about a seven year career. Um, she is actually predominantly um, a Lucha Libre style wrestler. So she is um, included in that high speed um, division in stardom that is essentially, um, for those of you who don't know, it's essentially like a 205 Live division of, of stardom. So like the small, the fast the unreasonably talented, that is where you're going to find Starlight Kid. Um, Starlight Kid has had her career um, start and, and continue with stardom. She hasn't really wrestled for uh, many other companies, um, but she did help form the stable um, within stardom called Stars, who um, uh, Mayu Iwatani um, is currently the, the leader of that before she actually was kicked out of Stars um, they, they have these matches that are almost like WWE drafts. So essentially, if a team loses, the winning team gets to pick a member from that team to add to their own. So in this case, uh, Stars had lost the match. 
and um, they lost the match against Oedo Tai, who is the Oh, uh, we'll, we'll call them the resident bad guys of, of stardom. Um, they, they, uh, Stars lost and Starlight Kid got picked and has been on Oedo Tai since as a bad influence and arguably um, wears the sassiest pair of sassy pants on <laughs> this faction. Um, she isn't the captain. Though I would make a strong um, statement that she is second in command, as she does tend to command the microphone quite a bit. Um, she is as talented on microphone as she is in ring. Her Lucha, Lucha Libre um, background just makes her unreasonably fast, unreasonably quick. She has this amazing stretch muffler move, Astrid. It is incredible. Not only does she get the leg over the head, but she will actually lay down and lock your head with her leg so that you can't physically crawl away. And it is notoriously difficult to get out of a, of a stretch muffler as it is if you're in a regular position mm -hmm. to have your head and then she'll lock your arms also to be completely locked into that. It, it's a really unkick outable pin. Um, if you're looking for someone who's got that high energy, high speed can do submissions also is getting weapons involved, but still looks really, really super cute and a little loot to leave Ray mask doing it. Mm -hmm. Starlight kids going to be the girl you want to watch. Nice, yeah. Now I'm definitely. I still after seeing the picture with her mask on, it's like I'm curious about her. Oh, but even so her, cool. her gear alone just reminds me a little bit of Yoshirai and the, the style that she has. Sure. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I did like the style that she has going on, though. It's pretty yeah. cool. She actually has this really cool, like, intro jacket where she actually has the masks of people that she has defeated mm. who um, used to wear um, Queen's Quest in particular. They actually used to wear a similar style mask just for their entrances. Mm -hmm. As she's defeated them, she's kind of collected their masks and sewed them to the inside of her jacket just to open it up and be like, look who I've beaten. I, I really quite like uh, her look. Uh, just everything about her is is very... I would almost say a little bit sassier version and maybe a little bit quicker version of Alexa Bliss, if that's the kind of style that you like, with maybe a little bit more Lucha Libre tendencies. Oh, I like the description already. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> Good way to get people's attention, right? Everyone loves yeah. Bliss. <laughs> yeah, very true. Um, I think we can go now to number eight. Uh, number eight is none other than the queen herself, Charlotte Flair. Mm -hmm. um for her top moments that they uh put in the evaluation period uh they put in her pinfall against ronda at wrestlemania mm -hmm. uh, she was last person eliminated from the rumble as well uh her beating naomi in february and i believe let's see yeah and the title defense that she had against tony before tony storm left uh wwe mm -hmm. this one i didn't i feel like i didn't know how i feel about it but uh mm -hmm. it just because I feel like even though, yeah, I get those moments that she's had. I'm not discrediting Charlotte Flair in any way because Charlotte Flair is incredible. Mm -hmm. But it almost feels like she's been out more than she's been wrestling this year, or like mm -hmm. between these last couple months. And it just, to me, it doesn't justify having her as number eight because I feel like she's been missing more than she's been in action recently. And, mm -hmm. she, you know, even with Triple H, you know, we still haven't seen her. She still hasn't returned. And even we have like, like her posting pictures every now and then in social media and so is Andrade. So we know she's good, but, you know, something must have happened there. Uh, I, I know that at least I saw one of these tweets uh, not too long ago that he said she's been missing for a reason. And then she'll probably do an interview sooner or later and to discuss why she's been absent. Uh, but I feel like I wouldn't have put her on number eight at least. I feel like could I come to somebody else? When we'll, hopefully we'll, later on we'll discuss who would like to be maybe our top ten. But I feel like it doesn't justify having Charlotte here. Um, mm -hmm. To me, at least, the only thing that really stands out is like that victory over Ronda. Not a lot of people have really have victories over Ronda Rousey in WWE mm -hmm. since she debuted, and, and being one of the last few people in the Rumble. You know, you as we all say, it's like being those like the last four people in the Rumble very important to like watch out mm -hmm. and. You know, Charlotte was one of those. But aside from that, I really don't see something that stands out to me from Charlotte that she has done this year to make her number eight. I don't know if you have any thoughts, even though you probably haven't seen much of her, at least. You know, I, I'm actually a big fan of Charlotte Flair, um, regardless if she's heel or face. Um, I always have been, just because from the moment I saw her, I knew she was exactly like her dad. 
She knows how to turn it on and be good. She knows how to turn it on and be bad. And she knows how and what to say to piss the crowd off. Like she's learned very, very well how to control the crowd and, and have them pretty much give her what it is that she wants. You know, when you're, when, when, when some of our friends, for example, we won't shout out who <laughs> sit there and are like, ah, rah, 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 Charlotte Flint, rah, rah, rah. you know, I don't feel that she didn't do anything that she didn't want to do to not get that reaction. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. She wants that animosity. She feeds yeah. off of it. I feel like it gives her the confidence that she needs to come out and do the job that she does. Um, yeah. That being said though, as much of a fan as I am as Charlotte, I do have to agree with this statement just simply based on the fact that she hasn't been around a lot, you know, and she did get married. I can understand you want some time, you know, the honeymoon phase, have some fun. I'm just saying, Andrade is working also. So, but obviously, again, there is obviously a reason why she isn't working. Um, so hopefully we will find out, you know, how, where what her status is with professional wrestling soon. But in the meantime, I, I do agree. I, I think the spot probably could have been um, given up to somebody who had been putting in the grind throughout that, um, that, time period that they were, um, you know, taking in that kind of uh, all of the credentials and stuff. But um, I, I do think she deserves to be on the list, but I, I definitely don't think it should have been top 10. Yeah, definitely agree. And just, you know, based on what I mentioned about Andrade, you know, if, if it's something bad that happens to her concerning, you know, my well wishes to her, and mm -hmm. hopefully it's something that bad that she can continue on wrestling because it's something mm -hmm. she has loved doing for the past couple of years, entertaining us. Exactly. And we don't want her to stop doing something that she loves either. So, mm -hmm. um, selfishly, I, she's really good at her job. Yeah, <laughs> <very good. laughs> um, so I just, I'm, I'm still waiting for the moment when she returns, especially now under mm -hmm. Triple H's regime, because I, I feel like there's so many other girls that can mix up with her now that we had, didn't have like, you know, that Charlotte Io Shirai or maybe Charlotte with Dakota Kai and a little bit of Shotzi and Raquel that we had uh, now. And I feel like maybe now is the time to bring her up soon mm -hmm. just because uh, for me, SmackDown has been lacking when it comes to the women's division. There hasn't been a lot going on other than the women's, you know, tag team championship kind of storylines going on. So I think they do need that star power for that Charlotte does bring to the table because Ronda isn't doing it for me, and I, I enjoy Liv, but at the same time, when you have Liv as champion, and you only have people like Ronda built up enough to challenge her, then you're going to have to go with Ronda, because Ronda's a star power out of the two, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I just, I miss having Liv as champion, but I just, I feel like they're missing their star power, and I like that somebody like Zelina is back, because she really brings eyes to uh, the, the, the woman as a whole, because she's still, even though she's a manager, still, she still wrestles, but um, yeah. yeah, I miss having somebody like Charlotte Flair and her power and what she brings to the mm -hmm. table in the SmackDown Women's Division. I, I really hope to bring her in soon because I really need her in that part of the, of the roster. 100%, 100%. Yeah, I definitely am missing Charlotte Flair. I, I do, you know, stalk her on social medias like most people <laughs> have noticed that there have been uh, she, she kind of went from posting multiple posts every day to posting maybe once every couple of days. So it's you know, and hopefully she's okay, and, you know, thoughts and, and prayers to her if she's not, and yeah. I do think that our next uh, number is someone that I know a lot about, though, mm -hmm. and that would be the great Saya Kamitani. Saya Kamitani. Um, this is a very interesting one for you, Astrid. I, I'm, I'm curious to see what your opinion is after this. Uh, Saya Kamitani, very, very young. She is known, I believe, mm -hmm. as the Golden Phoenix. Um which I would, I, I don't have the problem with because um, her the way she stylizes her gear, her entrance gear in particular, mm -hmm. the robes almost look like wings. So she mm -hmm. looks like she's flying out. She's got feathers. She's shedding everywhere. It's fantastic. And she also has this incredibly elegant choreographed entrance point that a, a lot of um, stardom girls actually have where they time their movements to their music yeah, and yeah. everything i absolutely love it mm -hmm. um but sam kamitani this is the interesting part she was originally a dancer on stardom um they had Ooh. almost something sort of like a nitro girls thing didn't okay. last very long um but i guess saya kamitani is such a talented dancer 
that she's actually been in competitions and stuff like high, high level competitions for dance. It's incredible. But she debuted in stardom with very little training in 2019. 2019. So that's two years ago, maybe give or take a couple months, depending on the month. Mm -hmm. They didn't give me the month when she <laughs> debuted. But um, she has been able to build herself within the company to win multiple championships. She is the current Wonder of Stardom's championship, or sorry, current Wonder of Stardom champion, which is essentially the intercontinental champion of Stardom. So she's the second highest level champion with only three years of experience um, wrestling professionally. And now she's number eight in her Boy. third year of wrestling in, in like, how incredible is that? I, I can't, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it because sometimes mm -hmm. this girl, she's almost sometimes a little too over animated for me <laughs> in that where if you're get, doing a regular Irish whip into the corner and you run into the corner and it's whatever, sometimes with her, instead of doing that, it's kind of like a Wah! into <laughs> the corner. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it adds to the overall intensity of the match. And it's not ever something that doesn't make sense. She's always like, it's always for someone who's larger than her. So it's mm -hmm. making it look like it's more powerful. Maybe she doesn't always know how to show it, but the entertainment ability that she has, her in-ring ability, I would almost, it, to describe her as like, um, a compare her to a North American wrestler that people would probably know, I would have to say that she's almost a more reckless Seth Rollins in that she yeah. has that, yeah, she has that technical <laughs> ability, she can fly, she can hit hard, but she has some really reckless moves that look really, really, really rough on everybody else. But just like Rollins, she goes above and beyond to give you that above the level entertainment that Rollins does. But she doesn't do it in almost a way where it's obnoxious, where he's sitting there like, Hah. like she does it in a way that's ladylike <laughs> and worthy of a championship. Um, so yeah, that's number eight, Saya Kamitani, Stardom Wonder, um, sorry, yeah, Wonder of Stardom Champion. Yeah, she's actually number seven, so she's even higher than my expectations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed that in the spread, I just when I, I look at her, her side of the spread, it just three years of experience, and it says previous career, a uh, former member for J Japanese pop group. What? Say <laughs> like never would have thought about it, but I do love her gear. Like at least the one in the pictures of here, it's her coarse and like um blue and a white to it, mm -hmm. especially when it with the white belt on top of it, it complements it so very well. And even the stills like they have in the spread here as well from her in the top rope, like you said, it just looks you know, everything in her gear looks incredible when she's flying yeah. as well. It just it's a nice visual to have here. <sighs> I call her Mrs. Fringe because she does have almost an unnecessary yeah. amount of fringe, but it adds so much because it does look like feathers. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. adds to the idea that she is the golden phoenix. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, we have number six, who is the juggernaut of Impact Wrestling, Jordan Grace. <sighs> this is to me a big one. Uh, this is definitely to me, she definitely deserves to be in the top 10, especially with how she's been in recent months. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, she, I think, believe I'm not mistaken, she was, uh, the she won the Queen of the Mountain that they had, the first Queen of the Mountain that Impact has had, which is, I think, one of the few matches that I never thought, like, the woman would ever have, because I didn't think about it that that wasn't a first. Um, she won the G Digital Media Championship, a bunch for Gloria as well. Uh, and see, what else do we have? Yeah, and she won a you great know. match with Cardona for that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think and she also having the knockouts title. I believe, if I'm mistaken, she's the first triple crown for the knockouts and impact as well, which is something huge to think about when it comes to Jordan. Um, but Jordan has been killing it. And I know this wasn't part of the moments because of the uh, uh, evaluation period, but even thinking about it, when I think of Jordan, I think of this match that she had recently with Masha Slamovich <laughs> that uh, Cody and I reviewed. And uh, it was incredible to watch and just and her transformation that she's had to look at the way that she wants to look 
it just gives you that determination of like I want not that I want to look like her but it gives you that determination to work hard to look the way you want to look for your own self um I mean yeah, I certainly want to look like her she is body goals yes um, <laughs> and I think even just like for the match itself not only the presentation of the match that they gave us but her gear looked incredible <laughs> usually she has that one piece and this is the first time we have her in a two-piece and you know her hair the championship you know it was like I feel like the total package just from the entrance itself mm-hmm. but I feel like you know Jordan has been doing so great at putting her name out there and it's one of those things that there's no way you haven't heard about Jordan with everything she's been doing in recent months I don't know mm-hmm. if you have any thoughts about you know what it's been like for her recently I'm just going to flat out say she is one of my favorite um, North American female wrestlers. Um, I have been following her for quite some time. Um, I started following her because of how she looked and actually because she was starting to um, compete in like, uh, uh, what were they? Like uh, powerlifting uh, competitions and stuff. And then she started breaking records doing powerlifting. And I'm like, yo. (laughs) <laughs> yo she is absolutely incredible like as i just mentioned she has body goals i mean i follow her because i like to just thirst trap over what she's doing <laughs> with bicep curls and whatever and, you know and then her partnership with uh jonathan gresham i mean that can only help build them both up right yeah. and then you have such a cute little family of five little poppers <laughs> I will say um, if I can criticize her about one thing, um, she does yeah. seem to have a foot and mouth syndrome sometimes where she bleh, something out onto social media or mm-hmm. an interview or something and then immediately re- regrets what she said and has to start mm-hmm. doing the PR backpedal. Um, I would be the only thing I would love to see her improve upon, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I know myself, I could probably learn how to improve on that. Let's do it together. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely feel that she definitely deserves to, to be at the level that she is in this list. She definitely worked so, so, so hard, mm-hmm. not even just over the last year, but the last few years, just fighting to get where she wants to be. And as you said, it is something to admire, um, the, to see the confidence and the drive come out from someone. It, it definitely is something to um, admire and, and idolize. Yep. Uh, another one that I really enjoyed, and I feel this is just like Jordan. This one's very justified for me. Uh, number five is AEW, you know, you know, that one, the Jade Cargill is just, wow. It's incredible. You know, just like with yours, it just, she has only two years of experience and she went from number 50 to number five. And just, that's mm-hmm. an incredible improvement, but um, she's been doing incredible in AEW. She's, has improving, has it been improving so much as a wrestler? Mm-hmm. And even looking back now at the time of this recording, I'll clarify She's 39 and 0 in AEW as well. So uh, pretty soon we'll probably have that 40 and 0 that we're all expecting. And mm-hmm. if you think about it this way, no matter who has been thrown at her, she's defeated them all in AEW. So just mm-hmm. with, if you think about it this way, with you know that winning streak that she has and having the TBS championship with her since the beginning, I feel like that championship was made for her. And to the point mm-hmm. like she's elevating it so far as champion. And, you know, having the baddies by her side and all these matches that she's had so far. And so many incredible people from, like, Madison Ray to Ty Conti, uh, Ty, or if you want to call it Ty Mello, um, Anna Jay. She's defeated so many, and it's incredible to think about it. So I definitely see it justify that she's number five in this top ten. And not only that, but uh, a lot of diversity in this list, including Jade as well. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm not really, um, like, an AEW... Um, regular viewer so i've only kind of seen um jade cargill when she's kind of like done the the big shows i think the last time i actually watched a match with her this is gonna like be horrible but like the last time i think i saw a match with her was i i want to say forbidden door that was the last time i saw her Mm -hmm. i wasn't um unimpressed I, I i'm not recalling anything negative or bad about that night so i'm gonna assume that it went really well <laughs> um again like this isn't really a, a show that i watch but i have heard a lot about this this woman in particular um and what i have noticed trending um particularly on my facebook um groups that i'm involved in is she's getting a lot more love now than hate 
Mm-hmm. And that's what I like to see because that to me means that there's drastic improvement happening and that the people are happy about it. Um, before, like when she first came out, I remember seeing a lot of people complaining about her and like saying that she was like the AEW Nia Jax and stuff like that. And I was like, whoa, we don't need to stoop to that level, guys. Give the girl a chance. Mm-hmm. Um and it, it seems like she's really taken the initiative and really gotten, like, it sounds like she's gotten a lot better. It makes me happy to hear. That being said, I have no problem with her where, being where she is. She's clearly worked hard. And, like, look at her. She's clearly worked hard <laughs> to look Ooh. the way she does. I wish I had abs mm-hmm. like that, man, especially after a baby. Goodness. <laughs> I haven't even had a baby, and I don't even have abs like that. <laughs> No, definitely goes for sure, especially body goes for her. And I feel like she's one of those people, like, uh, she keeps growing as a wrestler. I feel like it's also one of those people that AEW can also use to bring up their product to people that don't know about wrestling because she's marketable and marketable in that way. So I think that's also very helpful for the company as well, which is what I like to see in a wrestler. You like to see them not only being your champion, representing you on TV, but representing you outside of TV when they promote your product mm-hmm. as well, which is something you can do with Jade, like, very certainly. Yes. Hundred percent, hundred percent agree with you there. And then we have next for number four, uh, none other than the man Becky Lynch. Um, for me, Becky, <laughs> for me, Becky Lynch is very similar to uh, Charlotte. Uh, I feel like Becky has been out for a little while, and I'm not saying she hasn't made an impact in in you know in her months when she's active, but mm-hmm. I feel like she's been missing for quite a little bit of time. Um, but she still, when she still shows up on TV, she steals, you know, that spotlight. She has it for herself. Mm-hmm. And I feel like one thing that I love about Becky is that whether she's a face or a heel, whenever she does her promos, she delivers them in a way that she sells her opponent to you in such a great way that a lot of people don't do that very often. Mm-hmm. And I feel like even in her matches, she still carries on and she still highlights that person, showcases them, even when she's victorious in the end. Like, imagine her, like, you would have never thought, like, when you think about it in this sort of view, you never think about Becky Lynch competing for the 24-7 championship. But at the same time, when you think about it, you know, her having a match with Dana Brooke, which is not something you probably expect when you think about Becky Lynch, but it's still just a way for her to, like, kind of highlight that championship and highlight Dana as well, you know, while the match was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I feel she's been doing incredible. And when she was champion, you know, she defeated Bianca and Sasha at, at Crown Jewel. Uh, and then uh, Survivor Series, she also defeated Charlotte Flair. And she won her match against Lita as well for the uh, valuation period at the pay-per-view as well. So I feel like, you know, she's done incredible. And she, when she was champion, she was doing very well. And, you know, from selling the matches to selling her opponent and even, like, being iconic with her looks to the ring because her looks are iconic at this point the way she dresses every week um it's unfortunate now that she got injured at at SummerSlam, but her match and her storyline with bianca having that whole year storyline between them Mm -hmm. uh, i probably one of my favorite parts of like you know long-term storytelling that we had in recent times um it's unfortunate that she's out hopefully she'll return back pretty soon because i feel like Mm -hmm. Uh, her versus like damage control and with Bianca now when, when she does return I think that will be interesting to see uh, but I do hope that we get her maybe outside of the championship for a little bit of time because I feel like she's been in the championship picture for a little bit too long and I would like to see somebody different with Bianca especially after having basically that whole year soiling together um, I don't know if you have any thoughts about Becky Lynch as a whole and her position here I, I, I agree in the same stance that, that I, I believe she's a little highly ranked considering how little she was available um, or how little she was around. I disagree with the outfits. <sighs> There's just something about the eyeshadow that's supposed to be on top of the lid being under the lid. It's like, <laughs> we get it. You have bags under your eyes. We all do. Deal with it. Um, that being said though um, still super talented woman I still really enjoy watching her wrestle but um, as I said I don't like how highly like highly rated she was on this list um, just because she she wasn't around um, nearly as much Um, and as I mentioned like she may have had those good couple of wins and that might mean a hundred percent win but if someone wrestled a hundred matches and only won five they're still more active than she was in the calendar year. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, 
I am conflicted over this one. I don't necessarily feel that she should have been as high as she could. I definitely think she probably could have been top 20, but mm -hmm. I don't think she should have been top 10. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Like maybe like 15, 17, that kind of <laughs> odd number area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up for number three, we had AEW's Thunder Rosa. Um, I feel like Thunder Rosa, um, you know, she did a lot of stuff and a lot, a lot, of, a lot going on for her. Uh, mm. You know, she went from like beating somebody like Serena Deep and her, you know, long time feud at this point with Bre Breaker mm. as well. Uh, she, you know, retained against Tony and she went against Britt, uh, the first women's cage match in AEW as well. And she beat people like Nyla. And she also won a three way that included uh, Diana and Mercedes at Russell Cade wow. uh, as well. So, this one, um, to me, she's done incredible in her time in AW, and she's done what she could with the time she's given. This mm -hmm. is just kind of like, it reminds you a little bit of what I said earlier with Taya. Mm -hmm. This is not entirely her fault either. Uh, her booking hasn't been the best as champion. I wish it would have been better because when it was her time with Britt and when you knew that her victory is coming up, you were... Well, at least for me, I was super excited for her to be pushed the same way that Brit was. That's kind of mm -hmm. my expectation. Um, and being how it ha didn't happen that way, I was disappointed when we barely saw her on TV as champion. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's not a fail on her end of it. But I feel like whenever she was on TV, she took advantage of it. She gave us entertaining matches. And, you know, she played off very well with the ladies as well. At the moment, she is injured with a back injury issue. That's why she's been out for a little while. And that's why she's still technically AEW Women's Champion for the moment mm -hmm. until she returns. And she gets to face Tony Storm, who's the interim Women's Champion. And then we'll crown uh, the undisputed, I guess, uh, Women's Champion after that happens. So it's similar to what's happened now recently with John Moxie as one well AEW. Uh, so we're, we're going to get that Tony Storm Thunder Rosa match sooner or later, you know, to unify the titles in a way. Um, that's the part I don't like about it. I don't like the interim stuff. I would have preferred, even as, as a Thunder Rosa fan, I would have preferred for her to give up the title. Mm -hmm. It's like whenever you come back, then you can just say, look, I never lost a championship. I want that match. And you could get that Tony Storm Thunder Rosa match. And it's just awkward to announce Tony as like interim champion. But at the same time, it is what it is. I'm not, I'm not in the company, so I can't even say anything about it. <laughs> but um, I hope that when she does return, it, she's able to have that highlight. Because I feel like even with Tony, Tony being champion, she's been highlighted. Not similar like Britt, because I feel like Britt was almost there every single week in some shape, way, or form. But Tony Storm is pretty close to how Britt has been. We've seen her wrestle very often the past couple of weeks. So she's been in TV at least and shown on screen. Uh, mm -hmm. Versus with Thunder Rosa, we had her missing like in and out very often. Um, so I do hope that maybe, you know, when she does come back, we do get to see her more often on TV when she has the build up with Tony for their match. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I, I don't want to say I don't want her as number three necessarily, but I feel she does belong in the top 10 with everything she's done recently and with her representation as well. I think like, you know, she's a Mexican-American woman here representing Mexico as well in, in AEW and being Hispanic myself. It's just incredible to see uh, things like this, She, you know, with, especially with her entrance that she had. But I love my Mera Mera, so I'm happy that she in the, she's in the top 10. So how do you feel about her being there? <laughs> you know what? I, I, I think she's actually, like, this is one of those things where, again, on my Facebook um, pages, I actually find that Rosa's getting a lot of hate for being as high as she is in this list. And I have to disagree with a lot of people who are kind of saying that, um, only because it wasn't just AEW where she was working. She was everywhere else. This woman did not rest. You didn't see her sitting there taking pictures of her in a bikini on the beach going, oh my God, day off. No, every single day, she was doing a promotion thing. She was throwing a pitch out at a game. She was a special guest somewhere. She was wrestling here, there, and everywhere. She was going to Mexico. She was coming back to the U.S. She was going all over the place. She put the time in. And clearly, like, she's got the wins. Like, the criteria says in-ring achievement. You know, these are going to be wins and losses. She's clearly worked a lot more than a lot of the, the, the women on the, the list, not to take away from them or to say, oh, you shouldn't be taking vacations. But what I'm saying is she is number three because she was Mrs. No Days Off. 
She was Miss Fred Rosser this year. She had <laughs> no time to herself. She did not eat tacos. She just wrestled and did the work that she needed to. I think she's exactly where she needs to be. Um, and I think she, that she worked hard enough to earn that spot. But that's just what I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, if, and if you think about it that way, you're very right in that end of it that she's been everywhere. You know, she is part of the people in doing Mission Pro Wrestling. So you see her very often at the at the shows, not only doing meet and greets, but actually having matches with, you know, with the people that are training there. And you see her often jumping, doing indie, like indie events so often. So she's not just doing AEW. She's showing up everywhere. And not only that, but mm -hmm. she was there as champion with that AEW championship and, you know, representing mm -hmm. AEW no matter where he went. So if it, at Aspect, if you do see her everywhere, just like you did with Taya. So it doesn't mm -hmm. surprise me that she's in the top 10. You know, she deserves to be mm -hmm. in that high spot. She's been everywhere to put up her name out there. And she's done exactly that. So I, I don't want her for being here either. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm hoping she comes back soon and we get to have that match between her and Tony because they'll be interested to see who they, yeah. you know, they pick to be the champion at the end and how they go moving forward after that too. Yeah, and I do have to say, I do agree with you about the interim championship thing. I, I don't like it. I, I never have. I've been very critical of it. Um, particularly, it started with John Moxley running off with the IWGP US title. I don't like that. He should have he should have given it back. I do agree that that Rosa should have given it back and and done exactly what you said. It just makes more sense because yeah, saying, "Oh, this person's the interim championship." I I I feel like it twists a little knife in my heart because it's like it almost is sort of saying that the person who is this interim champion didn't quite deserve to be in that situation. And I don't like that because mm -hmm. Tony Storm 100% deserves to be in that situation. She worked hard to get there. So I, I feel that it devalues it a little bit and almost makes it like a bit of a joke, which I don't think that you should be attaching to your championship, especially mm -hmm. such a high level championship. That's the women's championship. Mm -hmm. That should be something that's actively, you know, fought for um, on a regular basis. And though I am sympathetic to Thunder Rosa's, you know, plight, and she's got a back injury. That's not something you want to take lightly, especially if you want to do this for the rest of your life. But mm -hmm. I, I agree. It, it, the, the title should have been relinquished. Tony Storm should be just the AEW women's champion. And yeah, that's how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Um, as number two, we have none other than the EST or WWE Bianca Belair. Honestly, from my end of it, I thought she was going to be number one again. <laughs> I really thought she was going to end up being number one. So I was surprised that she's number two, but I, I can't argue this either because it's still okay. <laughs> we'll talk um, about that when we get yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> because um, to think about it, um, they put the rankings and she was in 2018 number 85 and in 2021 she went to number one now number two so it's incredible to think that even between 2001 2002 she's still in the top 10 mm -hmm. in the top mm -hmm. there in somewhere and, and she's got you know, some high profile matches too yeah you got that right yeah. you know she's had so many matches like incredible matches with becky as well and not only her match you know it's still a crown jewel her becky and sasha still incredible match to think about um, she won the elimination ch chamber as well, so it's incredible to think like having a women's champion defend her championship at that kind of match and still coming out as champion in the end, um, and even just you know be beating Becky Lynch at SummerSlam. It's just incredible moments that you think about. Um, and another thing, she also had to beat uh, Becky Lynch and Asuka at Hell in a Cell as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, she's she had a few with Carmella as well. She beat her too. So just I feel she's beaten so many of the people. She's been highlighted so very well on TV. And just like Jade, you know, I feel like it's she's one of those people that she's been highlighted very well outside of WWE as well, mm -hmm. even as champion. The way she does media, she's I feel like she's everywhere with that championship. And I, I say that in a very positive way. I promise you that. <laughs> um, she's one of those people like she's, she's very marketable outside of her wrestling as well and i feel like even if she didn't want to wrestle or couldn't wrestle anymore i feel like she does have a future in the entertainment business as a whole because she's incredibly talented uh but i feel like as champion she's been doing so well she's one of those people that she didn't do let's say not a lot in nxt when you think about it that way compared to other people 
So you never really expected her to be this way in the main roster. And it's incredible to think of like how that transformation happened. And she's one of the few that has been doing so much better in the main roster than she did in NXT. And I think it's away from what she did in NXT, obviously. But still, she's doing a lot better than what she did there. And she's been champion for so long and still involved in the championship picture very often, too. So I, you know, I love the moments that she's had in WWE so far. She's done incredible. So I can't argue with her being number two. Uh, Did you have any thoughts about this one? You know what? I mean, I'm emulating her a little bit today with two braids. I can't quite spin it in the dark, but (laughs) Um, ever since she came onto the scene, I can't even tell you how much that I have been trying to master that little spin that she does Mm -hmm. with like that slight, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I can get like two thirds the way around and then I got to fumble my feet, but we'll get there. Um, I definitely feel that this is deserved. She, like you said, she's everywhere. She is marketing her championship. She is marketing the WWE. She is doing exactly what I expect out of a champion. Um, Mm -hmm. She's making the rounds. She's putting herself out there. I I don't really, like in recent memory, don't really Mm -hmm. recall anybody else being so out there as, as her. Um, And even like with with her husband at her her side for it, it just makes everything so much better. But her matches, like, I got to tell you, this woman just shows up, shows out every single time. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a bad match with her except for the Bicky Lynch thing at WrestleMania, which we don't (laughs) want to talk about because that was just bad. But um yeah, I, I, I definitely, uh, um, I, I really have had an eye on Bianca since she kind of debuted. Um, again, I'm not really a big WWE person, but from the pay-per-views that I have seen and the clips that I've seen, the talk that I've heard, she is the woman to be right now. She is kind of the top of the the ladder, even more so than Charlotte Flair, I'd almost say. She's kind of, as Macho Man would say, the cream of the top, crap rises to the top. I can't do Macho's voice, but you know what I'm trying to do. Yeah, the cream <laughs> rises to the top. That's the closest I can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of how I feel about her. I, I definitely feel uh, where she is, is, is definitely deserved. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll leave number one to you. <laughs> oh, number one. I was this one surprised me. I'm not gonna lie. No. Um, like I know the incredible talent that that this woman is, but I didn't know that anybody else knew. <laughs> so number one was um Sori. Sori is the um World of Wonder stardom champion. So she is the red belt um champion. She is the highest ranked champion in stardom she is the person to be um i actually didn't realize this but she's only actually been with stardom since 2020 um she's been having a career in wrestling and and various other things um uh, beforehand but she's only actually been a part of um stardom since 2020 which um it was says it was a return anyway um i couldn't find any information about her first stint there but um, yeah, she when she came in in 2020, she joined um, another popular girl named Julia to form, um, or sorry, to um, join her in her stable known as Donna Del Mondo. And then, um, yeah, uh, so she, Suri is 33 years old. So she's a little older than the other two girls um, in stardom. Um, but she's had quite um, the background and i think once i tell you what it is you'll understand why she's number one Mm -hmm. Um, on top of being a professional wrestler she's also a shoot boxer Mm -hmm. as well as a kickboxer and an mma specialist in karate um this this woman is a beast and has also participated in the ufc Mm -hmm. um just to to put into comparison I would say if you are a, oh, come on, Mel Ball, is it right? Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson. If you're a <laughs> Brian Danielson fan <laughs> and you like his strikes, mm-hmm. you will love Suri. Suri is literally, I would almost say, an even more expressive, more emotional, and almost just as hard hitting a wrestler as Brian Danielson. 
Yeah, wow. that guy. <laughs> Whatever his name is now, I always get confused. Um, but yeah, Sori, every hit lands. She knows where she's going and, and it hits every single time. But what also makes her incredible is that she is one of those people who gives as much to her opponent as she gives to herself. At the end of the match, she looks just as strong as the opponent, and the opponent looks just as strong as her. It really comes down to who can outlast who. And usually it comes down to Suri. <laughs> but um, if, if anyone is a Stardom fan and has recently taken in the Five Star Grand Prix, you'll know that this actually happened after the criteria. Otherwise, I don't think Suri would be number one. Um, there was about, I think she did about eight matches in um, the, the Stardom Grand Prix, and she only won five of them, I believe, um, taking several high-profile losses um, to a couple ladies. So, um, sorry... She also has been having quite the year um, where she's been kind of diving into fighting some of the past stardom um, big girls um, like um, Nane Takahashi as well as Kairi. So um, it, she, does she deserve to be number one? I mean, to me, heck yeah. Kicking <laughs> <laughs> her way up there since she started with stardom. And at one point when I actually was um, starting to watch stardom, this woman was what I would call the true belt collector because she came out in three different stardom titles. So she had the um, the official Red uh, World of Stardom belt, which again is the top uh, belt. She also had, I always forget what the name of it is and my notes are downstairs, but it was um, another belt where um, you can only challenge for it if you are not the same nationality as the person who holds it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just kind of a way to invite international girls to kind of come in and challenge mm -hmm. for, for the title. So she had that belt as well. And she also ha uh, was one half of the Goddess of Stardom champions, which are the tag team champions. So she would come out with these just incredible star-shaped belts, draped in gold, looking like a red assassin. It, it was a sight to behold and an intimidating one to be sure because she... <laughs> When she turns it on and she gets that beast face mode going, she's a scary looking lady. She's kind of Baszler level scary. Mm -hmm. So maybe don't piss her off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think it was interesting in seeing the discourse that we had in the community uh, when this happened uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people saying like, you know, it's because she's not in the major companies like AEW and WWE. I feel like a lot of people are dismissing her as number one and just like i keep thinking about it this way just because i haven't seen her or maybe heard from her doesn't mean she doesn't deserve to be number one mm -hmm. it's like i feel like it raises her accomplishments that she's had in the company what she's worked mm -hmm. her so far for so even like me i don't watch stardom so i don't know their names or anything like that but i can say oh she shouldn't be number one because of this because she maybe she's done great things that i missed so it doesn't mean you can't dismiss what she's done in her work, uh, which I think was something like I disagree with. And I saw that discourse happening on earlier. That's what sparked my interest about having this conversation with mm -hmm. you here today. Um, and I'm looking over like some of the little facts about the issue itself of like the 150 for the PWI. And mm -hmm. it's the first time somebody from Stardom becomes number one, which is an incredible thing for a representation. And I feel like it just brings you that topic of like, there's more wrestling outside of WWE and AEW, which is very important as well. Because a lot of people will think like, if it wasn't AEW and it wasn't WWE, like I feel like it doesn't count and it shouldn't be that way. Um, this, I, it just, I think it's a way to open the eyes of a lot more people and introduce them to these talents that they see on this list. You're just like, oh, I never heard from her. Let me watch her. And maybe open up your eyes to see different styles of wrestling and different companies and different aspects of it that I feel a lot of people really don't pay attention to, unfortunately. 100%. Um, so I feel like it's one of those things. Um, another little fact that I noticed, uh, we have people like Anna Jay and Jesse Jane who debuted in the PWI, uh, obviously being the first time there. Mm -hmm. And what I saw in the fun facts from them, if I'm not mistaken, the biggest jump that they had for somebody was Liv Morgan, who mm -hmm. jumped 120 spots for in this year. Uh, so she that was an incredible thing and ranking for her as well. Just pretty interesting. Um, mm -hmm. And we have just two. I'm gonna try to name a few of them uh, because we may do another part two, depending how with you know how we go about <laughs> it. Uh, just to you know discuss other people that are not in the top ten. But um, 
we had uh, Tasha Steele from Impact was number 11. Mm-hmm. Definitely one that I feel is very deserving, you know, just winning the Nakas Championship for the first time in the Ultimate X as well. And mm-hmm. she's been doing a lot of indie bookings as well. So, I, you know, I see that one there. And mm-hmm. uh, Britt Baker as well, you know, she's done, she did great as AW Women's Champion and holding that title for 290 days. So just incredible thing, like she's number 13. And Masha Slamovich, you know, she's had an incredible, like, on her feet a streak until now she had the match with Jordan so you know I don't see anything wrong with her being there either and mm-hmm. people like Mickey James I don't know you know the incredible Mickey James of course I'm glad she's number 15 <laughs> um, and people like Diana who's another person just like Taya that ever since her release I mean she's been kicking butt you know having so many championships been in so many companies and been highlighted very well on impact as well mm-hmm. um Liv Morgan being number 17. I can't argue with that one either. I feel like even, <laughs> you know, from having money in the bank, winning the championship, she's been improving so much. She's been highlighted very much as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do want to say, let me see if I could find her here. And, you know, we have Tony Storm being number 25. One that I, I know Ed is going to be really surprised when he sees this and hears this, but, you know, I'll calm <laughs> you down, uh, lady. Simmer but down, I, I was very surprised i would say um, of having somebody like mandy rose being 21 just because mandy has been I champion agree. now for a whole year she's mm-hmm. been defending this tight nxt women's championship against so many opponents since taking them all down it has been very like a highlight and very focused of nxt with toxic attraction so i feel like with those accomplishments alone and even beating uh, obviously blair davin for maker star more recently how did you have her at 21? And just like, I feel like that's an incredible resume where you think about wrestling and NXT so far just alone. So I feel like what I would like to see her higher up. I don't know if you have any thoughts about that end of it for that one too. I mean, I, I don't really, again, WWE is not something that I'm very privy to. So I'm not entirely, um, I don't really have much of an opinion on, on Mandy Rose. I can say when I was watching it a little bit more regularly, I wasn't a fan of hers, but that was also like, a few years ago and i recognize there's been tremendous amount of improvement that has happened since then um do i think she should have been ranked a little bit higher no because that would have ranked her over my personal favorite who is number 20 which is utami hayashi shida and i don't want that (laughs) selfishly sorry ed um but um one person that I do want to point out to everybody, and I have been doing it since I, I discovered her, um, is number, I believe it was 42. Just double check here. 41. 41. Um, Suzu Suzuki. Um, please let the name definitely lead you to think about this woman. What you think. Her last name is Suzuki. She likes to hurt people. Um, And she likes to do it with a smile and laughing about it, much like Minoru Suzuki. If you like Minoru Suzuki, check out anything with Suzu Suzuki. She is a 20-year-old deathmatch specialist. She's a specialist at deathmatches at 20, you guys. 20. This this woman is a better bitch than most men I know. Just putting it out there. And she does, she's so pretty on top of that. Mm-hmm. She is a freelancer right now um, in Japan. She's a part of a, a deathmatch group named Prominence. Um, the leader is a, a girl named Risa Sarah. I, I didn't check to see if she was on the list, but um, Suzu Suzuki is the one person that I highly highly recommend everybody check out i feel that she is going to go big places you can ask andre como my partner as well we're both hard on the suzu suzuki train suzuki boogeyman for everybody doesn't just need to be a a minoru suzuki boogeyman we have a suzu suzuki boogie woman now Y'all better watch out. I love it. (laughs) Uh, Another person that I really want to congratulate here, we have Casey Spinelli at number 79. (laughs) That's amazing. Um, Yeah, just incredible to see people that we know um, outside of the U.S. in here as well. Mm -hmm. So just having her there, I think, was incredible to uh, look at. Uh, Chelsea was like, um, that I see here that it, 
um, it's a highlight for me too. Like Nicole Matthews, uh, she is number um, 92. And I feel like Nicole has been killing it also. Like I see her every single advertisement I see, I feel like it's a different company at this point. So it's incredible to see her making her name out there and showing it off in different companies too. So that's incredible to see as well. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see who else we see here as well. Someone I did want to point out, I think was number 17, um, Azumi. Um, she's another girl in in stardom. She's actually the current high speed um, champion. Um, this girl, I call her a quiet riot. Um, she doesn't like to talk much on the microphone, and when she does, she she does decently. It's not anything fantastical. She does most of her talking in the ring, and she is one of those people who moves so quickly and is almost like. I would say she's almost like a 205 Live person. So if I had to compare her to a wrestler on the scene right now that everyone might recognize, it would be TJP. Um, she's got that incredible, almost Lucha-esque um, kind of movability about her. But like Becky Lynch, she really likes that arm bar. And she can actually get um, into that arm bar in almost any way imaginable. Um, and she, I believe she also does um, something very similar to um, Deanna Parazzo's finisher where she gets both the arms um, locked behind the back. Mm -hmm. She does something very, very similar also that has uh, won her a number of matches. Um, yeah, incredible talent. If you guys are interested in that, you know, high pace high energy like on the edge of your seat kind of matches i highly highly recommend you checking out anything with azumi as well as starlight kid who was in the uh the, i believe she was number eight there i know she was in the top 10 yeah i think maybe 10 yeah azumi and starlight kid are like Sami Zayn and kevin owens they're a fight forever pairing that you mm -hmm. just always want to see together because somehow they always come up with something mm -hmm. fresh mm -hmm. and new to entertain and wow the crowd. So definitely check those two out if you guys are looking for mm -hmm. that kind of match. Yeah, another congratulations to somebody that's familiar to us too is Taryn from Accounting. Uh, and here they list uh, ha her having two uh, championships in RCW, aka Real Canadian Wrestling, and you know still being and defending the LP. Well, I, I, she lost it now, sorry, but uh, she had defended uh, against Nicole Matthews, Rachel Elving, and Veda Scott the LPW Championship. I think it was for mm -hmm. more than three hundred days, if I'm not mistaken. So it's incredible to see that accomplishment listed there as well for her mm -hmm. um, here in the top one hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. And trying to think of who else we can kind of mention here that we've had. But yeah, those are the few, uh, some of the few that really, like, really stood out to me that are familiar to me. I also love somebody like Kayla Sparks, who I still am trying to reach out, hopefully, for a future interview um, and to see something like this and, you know, to see her included here. But I feel like is I had the copy from, I think it was last year, and if I'm not mistaken, the year before. And I want to order the physical copy of this one, too. I just wanted to have the digital for this uh, particular episode. But mm -hmm. I think it's such a great way for to introduce me to so many people that I haven't heard of or people that I maybe had seen and didn't realize I had watched them and just to continue on following uh, their, mm -hmm. you know, their careers as a whole. But I love more than anything with this top 10 is seeing the diversity we have in the top 10 here. Because I feel like there's so much representation from stardom to WWE to AEW. And I like having a little bit of everything in this top mm -hmm. 10. And I, and I feel like it's different styles and different people and different backgrounds. Which I really love to see. Um, so, yeah, I just like hopefully we'll be able to talk a little bit more uh, in the future. But, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like so far it's I love seeing how many women they have into all from the fact that this list had I, I don't know if it was you know, a hundred people before and now too, like they had to extend it to do 150 to be able to fit the people that they had. And just imagine when they do 200, because there's so many people that were not even ranked to begin with. Um, yeah. But yeah, I love seeing the people that have debuted on the list of people that have made so many jumps, like Liv Morgan, because she has improved mm -hmm. a lot in recent months and be able to like really show that in something like this is incredible to see. But yeah, mm -hmm. overall, it's just pretty interesting to have a conversation about this, uh, being that it's a PWA for the women's, um, 
But yeah, I loved it. I don't know if you had any final thoughts about just the ranking as a whole. If anybody you saw there that maybe you didn't see ranked, or maybe you somebody that you will you love to see here in the rankings, though. I mean, obviously, I, I I've expressed my my sadness that uh, my favorite Utami Hayashishida dropped from number two to uh, number twenty. But that being said, like she did have not a great year in comparison. She did drop the world title belt. She's had a couple high profile losses. So to be honest, I'm not surprised that that she did have this significant drop. And a lot of people just simply had a lot better of a year than she did. Um, I, I have to say, though, I, I love the same thing that, that you do, is, is that it's getting people talking and it's getting people talking about wrestling. And that's what I love about wrestling is that it is so subjective. Every, everyone can find something that they like and there's nothing wrong with it. it. It's perfectly fine because what I like, you might like and what you might like, I might not like. And that's great. What matters is that we like wrestling. Um, with this list though, overall, I, I, I'm very happy with it. And of course, if my personal biases would have moved a few things around, mm -hmm. but personal biases don't have a place in this kind of ranking and state. And I think all of these women on this list worked super, super hard, as well as the thousands of women who weren't included on this list. And there's probably hundreds of women who are going to be included on this list next year who weren't included on it this year. And I look forward to having the same conversation with you about who deserves to be where <laughs> next year. Yeah, I feel like it's just incredible. Thank you. Yeah, uh, this one fifty, like we said, of people that were not included. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to find the year exactly, but I think it's the first time. I don't know if they said since 2012 or maybe 2013 that somebody that isn't in WWE is actually number one. So it's incredible to think about like showing off. Like I said, that earlier point that there's more wrestling outside of WWE and AEW, which are what people consider like the major leagues here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I love seeing this list and the diversity we have here, all the different backgrounds and different styles and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I can't wait to really sit down and look at it. Plus, I'm the kind of person that I like having my hard copy. So I, I like flipping over the pages and looking at all the articles Same. and everything. Same. So I'm looking forward to ordering it and getting my physical copy and just be able to read it. And I just want to say congratulations to that was a woman that made it here. And if you didn't make it, don't get discouraged. You know, there's always next, you know, the next time. It just doesn't, it doesn't mean in any way that your work isn't seen. You know, it, they just have a criteria to it. So just don't get discouraged and keep working hard at what you're doing because people are going to keep seeing you. Just keep showing out because that's what this woman did. They keep showing out and showing off wherever they were. And that's how their names were up here. So yeah, don't, don't get discouraged because of that. I feel like, oh, you know, we're going to see different women next year and it's going to be incredible to have a conversation about this next year when we see somebody different on the cover and exactly. i love another thing that i love i love seeing that cover with the three ladies from stardom just in the front cover as well <laughs> like nobody wb related to. aw is on, <laughs> from the cover which is amazing to see. But, i have to too i, I have to say yeah, it says turns my little black heart not black <laughs> Yeah, and I also want to say, like, I uh, thank you for everybody at PWY for doing this list. I know it's not easy being in a committee and working on something like this. I feel like, especially when it comes out, you all get some kind of hate and backlash on the internet about the rankings of people's favorites not being when they're supposed to rank. And that's why we wanted to do have this discussion, but to point out our opinions by being civil about it as well. It doesn't mean you didn't do you know a good job with the magazine and with the rankings. We just have different opinions and different styles, which is you know what we have in wrestling, as you mentioned. So yeah, just, I just want to say to people at PWA, thank you for making this. I just like it sparks still conversations within wrestling about styles and companies and, you know, and talents. So I hope, you know, even with everything you're getting, you still find a positive that you're getting to introduce people to new wrestlers they hadn't known about and new products and new companies and, you know, a little bit of everything, a little bit of new styles. You know, for me, this is a good introduction to so many people. So that's why I'm excited to get my hard copy so I can start looking at these people later and hopefully reach out to some of them for interviews too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm very happy to see this and to see the woman getting highlighted. But yeah, this is it for us doing the top 10 of PWI's Women's 150. But before we close out, where can the people find you, Miss Mel? So you can find me on Twitter at Collins Melball, and you can find me on Instagram at Melball Collins. <laughs> it's complete opposite because someone stole the other one on the other thing. You can also find me on Facebook at uh, Melball Collins, and you can follow me on YouTube at Andre and Melball's Wrestling Talk.
It is. Uh, for me, you can find me on Tuesdays doing Taking Over with Parrish when we talk about NXT. And then Thursdays at 10.30 p.m. with Cody Defoe, the Mr. Foe, as we talk about impact on making an impact. And we also have replays on Backbreaker Media uh, for uh, Mondays for making an impact. And for this one, we have it on replay as well later. This is the first time we're pre-recording it uh, because Mel's going out of town. And this is a conversation I wanted to have. We both had it fresh in our minds Immediately. As, as before we forget anything thing um but yeah i just uh, i wanted to thank everybody for watching it uh, leave us you know subscribe to the channel leave a like on the video and you know tell us anything any discussions we want to have about the pwi mm -hmm. uh, women's ranking so if you have any thoughts and that we didn't think about it something we didn't bring up we would like to see it in the comments just be civil about it please let's just mm -hmm. let's have a regular person conversation though um <laughs> but yeah just give us your opinions of like if you would have ranked somebody a little bit higher, somebody a little bit uh, lower, if somebody that maybe shouldn't have been where they are at, any kind of accomplishments you would have brought out and said that they didn't have anything you can think about, yeah, let us know in the comments. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I want to thank everybody for watching and yeah, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you all later.